Hello everyone, and thank you for viewing our poster where we determined the utility of IL-1 beta as a biomarker for NASH, and developed an ultra-sensitive Samoa immunoassay to measure IL-1 beta in serum. My name is Sue McCarr, I'm a lead scientist at Silurion, a clinical research organization and we're based in Lincoln, Nebraska. Fatty liver disease and NASH are one of our therapeutic focuses, and there is an imperative need for non-invasive biomarkers for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH. Pro-inflammatory cytokines are produced, promoting progression of NASH and our potential biomarkers. For example, IL-1 beta is a cytokine produced by the inflammasome and pyroptotic cell death, and it induces hepatic inflammation when it's released. Antagonists of IL-1 beta and the inflammasome are under development for therapeutics for NASH because of this mechanism. Based on the pathophysiology and mechanism of NASH, we hypothesize that IL-1 beta could be an early marker of NASH because it's produced before inflammation. It could be prognostic for patient enrollment's context of use and a mechanism of action or therapeutic effect context of use for IL-1 beta antagonist drug development. At Celerion, we set out to develop and validate an accurate bioanalytical method to measure IL-1 beta and to validate and determine its clinical utility as a biomarker for NASH. To develop and validate this biomarker assay, we developed a biomarker work plan, which we have found is key to helping us understand the fit for purpose validation tests that must be done during development and validation of a, um, of a biomarker method. Our biomarker work plan includes the context of use, which in this case was to use IL-1 beta as a prognostic marker for patient selection or inclusion-exclusion criteria. We realized early on that an ultra-sensitive platform would be needed based on the literature and our previous immunoassay data for IL-1 beta, so we decided to use the Quanteric Samoa platform. We also decided to measure disease NASH samples from, patient, from a patient enrollment database to first determine if the marker fits the context of use and to derive clinical utility data. And second, we did this to address any biological concerns with NASH samples that may affect analytical measurements such as lipemia of NASH samples. In our previous measurements of IL-1 beta in human serum with electric immunoluminescence, MSD-ECL, 69% of clinical samples are below the limit of quantification. Also, the limited clinical published studies which measured IL-1 beta reported values below the LLOQ of the assay. Therefore, we developed an ultra-sensitive immunoassay by converting an IL-1 beta commercial kit for the Samoa um, SRX benchtop platform. We optimized buffers to lower noise, and we determined a minimum required devolution of 1 to 2 minimized matrix appearance while maintaining assay sensitivity. The Samoa IL-1 beta assay uh, demonstrated low background and a 25-fold increased sensitivity compared to MST. 48 of 62 samples incurred that were measured during validation were above the LLOQ. While Samoa improved sensitivity, most of our incurred samples from the NASH pre-screening database were grossly lipemic. When measured with Samoa, these samples had higher coefficient of variation between replicates compared to non lipemic serum. We suspected this may be due to fats interfering with the bead-based nature of the technology. Sample dilution to overcome lipemia could not be used due to a loss of sensitivity. Therefore, we extracted lipids from the NASH serum with LipoClear. It's a non-ionic poly polymer that binds to and participates lipids. Addition of this buffer reduced CV to less than 30% for incurred samples without impacting recovery. We also increased acceptance criteria to 30%, which is acceptable for our context of use. Finally, we also measure NASH samples as part of the validation. The samples are obtained from a pre-screening database of patient enrollments where patients were screened for liver fat and liver fibrosis by the FibroScan transient elastrography ultrasound and with a blood draw. So these samples where we measured IL-1 beta fit the context of use as a biomarker for patient enrollment. IL-1 beta concentrations in the 62 incurred samples measured by the Samoa assay did not increase with increased hepatic steatosis, as shown by the CAP measurements as a measurement of liver fat. IL-1 beta also did not increase with liver fibrosis, as shown with the VCTE measurement in this graph. Therefore, this suggested that 
the IL-1 beta biomarker cannot be used um, for the context of use of trial inclusion exclusion criteria. This is the first reported use of ultra sensitive technology to accurately measure IL-1 beta in NASH that we have seen. While IL-1 beta did not correlate with NASH severity for a prognostic biomarker for trial inclusion exclusion criteria, it may be useful biomarker for other contexts of use, such as target engagement for IL-1 beta antagonists. The challenges of sensitivity, lipemia, and incurred samples that we encountered are applicable to, to other NASH biomarker studies. For example, we believe extraction of lipemia is necessary when using the Samoa platform to improve, um, to improve reproducibility. Finally, the study de demonstrates the need for fit-for-purpose validation for biomarkers based on a context of use statement. The decision to measure incurred NASH samples during bioanalytical validation allowed early recognition that IL-1 beta did not fit a prognostic biomarker context of use during stu before study sample analysis. It also allowed us to pick the correct technology to measure IL-1 beta. Thank you so much for viewing our poster and please contact us with any questions on our biomarker data for NASH. We have validated several other biomarkers for NASH in conjunction with a large patient database where we measured these biomarkers during patient screening to make patient enrollment faster for NASH trials. Thank you.